Hey, so I'm going to do a commentary for <clears throat> the original Friday the 13th, 1980, directed by Sean S. Cunningham. This is the uncut version, and um, it's about an hour 30, 30, hour 35. So uh, let's get going. We'll start. This is a Blu ray. In three, two, one pressing play. So we have the Paramount logo. So, Camp Crystal, Camp Crystal, Crystal Lake, 1958. All singing. So, I was trying to think of what commentary to do, and uh, I was like, you know what, let's just do the original. So, so I, I like, like this movie, movie but um, I, I think, think its sequels are better. I'm not, not exactly sure how I rate them. them but Definitely, yeah. I, I think, think the sequels, sequels are better. better. I mean, Sean S. Cunningham, Cunningham, I mean, what, what has he even done after this as a director? director? So yeah, it's, here come the tigers, Manny's orphans, together. This is before. His first movie is a short, The Music Teacher, and The Art of Marriage. <laughs> what? 1970. Wow. the 13th 1980 a stranger is watching 82 oh wow this has uh captain jadeway from star trek <laughs> voyager that's hilarious The eleven year old daughter and girlfriend of a man whose wife had been bleeped and killed in front of his daughter three years earlier are kidnapped by the same killer, held captive in a bunker below Grand Central Station. The two plot their escape while the police try to track their kidnapper. Oh, that kinda of sounds interesting. Uh spring break. The New Kids, Deep Star Six, I don't know, it's just like a bunch of stuff I have not, this, oh, this is like underwater, it's, A team of Navy personnel stationed at a temporary base at the bottom of the sea, the ocean, and tasked with setting up nuclear missile, discovers a huge underwater cavern which houses a giant prehistoric creature.
Shaius Cunningham, born December 31st. Wow, New Year's Eve, 1941, New York City. He started about the same time as Wes Craven. So now we see the, the uh, campers getting killed. Cunningham meets Craven and decided to make a comedy romance film called Together. Then they both shocked the world. The last house on the left. Boy, did he produce that? Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So he, he the last house on the left, 1972, Craven directed the flick and Cunningham financed and produced it. However, Cunningham wanted to get a mix of comedy and horror and made the case of the full moon murderers and then started other comedy films like okay. he saw John Carpenter's Halloween and wanted to make a follow-up film so That's interesting, though. So he 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 was friends with Wes, Wes Craven, or produced a movie of his, and financed it. Yeah, Last House on the Left, produced by. I don't know that that's another movie. I don't, I don't think it's that good. You can just tell it was just made for like nobody, you know. I mean, it has its moments, but I don't know. I'm almost like I think that the that the remake's better. We actually pull up Roger Ebert. So Roger Ebert famously hated this movie. Yeah, I see part two. 2009 remake. <laughs> he gives part two a half star. <laughs> Gosh, he, he hated them. Yeah. I can't find it. He gave the 2009 remake two out of five stars. So they're still, like, reviewing movies on ebert.com. It's like, I don't care, but I care about his. Oh, Last Voyage of the Demeter got a three and a half. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it's got a death curse. Surprised I can't find his review of it. They cheated. Roger Ebert. 80 movie was nominated for a Razzie Award when it came out in 1980. The Razzies are a joke. 
They nominated freaking Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. I think Carpenter's The Thing. I mean, it's like, I don't know. I know they got terrible reviews back then, but I mean, if you can't at least be like, well, it's at least not Razzie worthy. I'll look at I guess I'll look at part two. This, this movie, this is for part two, but this movie is a cross between the mad slasher and dead teenager genres. About two dozen movies a year feature a mad killer going berserk, and they're all about as bad as this one. Some have a little more plot, some a little less, doesn't matter. Seeking into my scene in this movie theater from my childhood, I remembered the movie fantasies when I was a kid. They involved teenagers who fell in love, made out with each other, customized their cars, listened to rock and roll, and were rebels without causes. Neither the kids in these movies nor the kids watching them would have understood a worldview in which the primary function of teenagers is to be hacked to death. This review will suffice for Friday the 13th. Film of your choice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just know they famously hated these movies. Like, really, with a passion. I mean, I, I, as far as I know, they, they, um, him and Siskel published, uh, what's her face? Betsy Palmer. They, like, published her, like, address. Because she was, like, an old famous actress. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen a lot of the stuff she was in, but... Um... Not really. The Tin Star... It Happened to Jane... But her career goes back to 1951, so... Oh, she was in Charles in Charge. Well, there's Kevin Bacon. There's the Baconator. Get a double cheeseburger with extra bacon. So, you know, this has Kevin Bacon. Uh, the original Nightmare on Elf Street has Johnny Depp. And almost all these actors are from, like, the Northeast. Or was this filmed? I mean, wasn't it, like, New Jersey or something? Yeah, see, New Jersey, Robbie Morgan, New Jersey. Adrian King is... Oyster Bay, Long Island, New York. Jeanne Taylor is... Hartford, Connecticut. And where was Kevin Bacon born? Wow, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 1958. The city of brotherly love. 
<laughs> in one of the oldest cities in America. So this guy with his shirt off looks just so weird. <laughs> Could draw very well. Laurie Bartram is Missouri. What about this guy, Peter Brow Brower? Hartford, Connecticut, 1945. Yeah, I mean, you know, these movies aren't, you know, they're not going to win Academy Awards, and but... I, I like watching them. I think they're pretty good looking movies. Um I've always liked the forest setting. Which is why overall I like Friday the 13th more than Halloween, but Halloween has higher has better has a you know, the first Halloween you, you, you can't top really. So because you cause it has John Carpenter, so like the first three Halloween movies are real I think are really good. This film was this this movie was filmed at Camp No BB Sco. What? <laughs> in New Jersey. The camp is still in operation and it has a wall of Friday the thirteenth memorabilia to honor the movie was set there. And if anyone's watching this, uh I don't know if you ever watch uh the R rated show or what is it called? All, all, uh, the R rated podcast. I don't something like that. It's a YouTube channel. Um I think he's he's posted a few busy like he's been there a few times I think, but he just posted one where he he went there, and um, um, they have this thing once a year I think he said where there's some of the people in this movie, maybe the sequels to I don't know but the sequels may not been filmed in the same location so. That's messed up, dude. That guy almost hit her. That's messed up, dude. So, yeah, filmed in New Jersey. Oh, yeah, Betsy Palmer accepted the role because she was in desperate need of a new car. She never accepted the role. <laughs> Over the she she didn't like the movie when it came out. She hated the script. Over the years, however, Palmer did warm up to the movie as it made her more famous than infamous. And made appearances at conventions and in documentaries to discuss it. Yeah, because uh, you made tons of money off it, probably. <laughs> kids sound like little girls. But when 
You've had a dream as long as I have. So Harry Crosby, who played Bill in this movie, is the son of Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. Is that Ben Crosby? <laughs> Betsy Palmer tells fans she has no idea who the character in the hockey mask is since her son drowned in 1957. Yeah, it, it is true. It's kind of like, well, did he drown? And then the end scene... Obviously, this is full spoilers. I mean, I don't know how you watch a commentary if you've seen the movie, but um, and look at how she landed there. Wow, she like, she could have like hurt herself. So, is this Betsy Palmer in this in this Jeep? I guess so. I don't know. I honestly don't watch this one that much. Because I like two better. I like three better. Four. Five kind of pisses me off because it's not actually Jason Voorhees. I think six is the best one, pro probably. Probably. I don't know. I, I, I Two through six I really like. Except five has its moments, but it's, you know, I don't like the twist. It's really stupid. It is true, though, because it's like, well, then Jason Forey's drowned, and then there's the flash, and then the very end of the movie when he comes out of the water, but then that's, I think she's, isn't that just, like, her hallucinating? I don't know, they obviously didn't know this would make, this, they were going to make tons of sequels, and Jason would be the killer, and they, they had no idea. Oh. It was the 18th highest grossing film of that year, facing stiff horror film competition from such high profile releases as the, as the Shining, Dressed to Kill, The Fog, Prom Night. Yeah, nice. I don't think I've seen Dress to Kill or Prom Night, but uh like the fog. If you were a flavor of ice cream, what would you be? Rocky Road. What a weird question. Well, I think my <clears throat> my favorite ice cream is mint chocolate chip. So, would you say vitamin C is supposed to neutralize the nitrates? Special effects supervisor Tom Savini per performed the arrow that nearly that shot that was nearly missed Brenda when she was sitting on the archery target. We just saw that scene. He's in perks of being a wallflower. Mr. Callahan. <laughs> he does do some acting. Yeah, from Dust Till Dawn, Sex Machine. Hell yeah. That's a fun movie. I actually really like him as an actor. I think, he, I think he's pretty good.
30 makeup effects. The last one was a 2012 in human resources. Oh, he did Invasion USA, Day of the Dead, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, which is not the final chapter. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it's like stuff like that, I think, makes the series even more fun. Like, because you can just laugh at it. It's just like, oh, they're going to be the, we're going to make one more, make tons of money, and then it makes a bunch of money, and they're like, you know what, let's, let's just make a couple more. <laughs> oh, yeah, they kill the snake. Yeah, it's like, do you have to kill a snake, but... They're kind of just, like, wasting time. But I don't know, I think it builds, you know, they're, I, I think it builds a, a tone in the movie. But yeah, Siskel and Eber, it's just like, chill out, guys. But I guess they just watch so many movies, you know... And there was tons of uh, Halloween copies that were just bad. So, you know, I don't know. And it's like, do you have to publish her address? It's like they doxed her. It's like some of the first doxing. <laughs> I don't know. I like Cisco and Ebert, but come on, guys. That's not cool. It's like some crazy guy. A person could come and show up to her house. It's not cool, guys. Chate. Oh, yeah. See, that looks, looks real, because it is real. At least we know what's for dinner. <laughs> I've actually heard some steak doesn't taste that bad. Yeah, that chick's hot. Oh yeah, and this and this and this motorcycle driver doesn't even know how to ride a motorcycle. It's like so funny. Probably a plastic badge. Nice bike. You been smoking, boy? Smoke it, don't smoke. It causes cancer. You just get off a spaceship or something? I've always kind of been like, it, it would be fun to have a bike. They're so dangerous. It would be fun, though. So, uh, Tom Savini's first uh, makeup IMDb is uh, Deranged, then Dead of Night. Deranged is 1974. Dead of Night, 1974. Martin, makeup artist, 77. Friday the 13th, 1980. Maniac. Well, he did Maniac, 1980. The Burning, 81. Creep show. Eighty two. Creep show is a weird movie. That is a weird one. I mean, I, I like it, but it, it's so weird. Like, like Stephen King has his, his acting in it in his own segment. It's so weird. Portland, Maine, another Northeasterner. Stephen King is such a weird looking guy. Leslie Nielsen. That's right. Ted Danson. 
or I mean, yeah, it is ten dance and Okay, Ted Danson was born in San Diego, California. Birth name, Edward Bridge Danson III. <laughs> Why just not go by Edward Danson? I guess he thinks it sounds better, Ted Danson. I don't know. Hal, Holb Hal Holbrook. Uh, sorry, I'm not talking about the movie. I don't. I don't. I just don't have that much to say. Um, look at the trivia here. Um, I mean, I like the movie, but I think it's got a great look. You're doomed. You're all doomed. <laughs> See, it's got like fun characters like him. <laughs> I love that guy. Then they just kill him though. It's too bad. Cause it's like it'd be cool if he like showed up in some of the other ones. You know? It's got a death curse. Like some rare. What burgers? Yeah, they're I think they're making burgers. old American cuisine. The MPAA. Oh, gosh. I hate them. They've, like, cut up so many great horror movies. And now look at movies. Now look what they get away with. It's just too bad. It's, it's like, I would just love to see these movies with no MPAA input. That would, that would be great. Because I don't care what they say. The MPAA told the producers of Friday the 13th to scale back on the gore for the sequel since they regretted the amount of gore that got it through the original and the subsequent critical backlash. This is why part two is much less gory than part one. No, oh, whatever. I mean, now you look at it, it's, it's not that gory. Is that a is that a Miami Dolphins shirt? Why is he wearing a dolphin shirt? In New Jersey. So you see why I go into the forest. And bacon's mackin. She wants extra bacon. Hmm. 
I've been afraid of storms since I was little. It's raining really hard. It sounds like pebbles when it hits the ground. Well, you do kind of forget how much of this movie is just like, you know, them just talking to each other. See, that would be like quick cut, quick cut, quick cut. Like it would be, it'd be like, you know, like two second cut, three seconds cut, two seconds cut, three seconds cut, th three and a half cut, four and a half cut. I just like how movies were filmed back then, like much better. Like, look, like the original Star Wars. Like, I really like how the original Star Wars is filmed. And then you look at like the J.J. Abrams stuff, and it, you know. Just so many quick cuts, like duh, 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 cut, 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 cut. It's like, come on, slow it down. So this was inspired by both Halloween and Meatballs. I don't know if I've seen Meatballs. Oh yeah, Sean S. Cunningham was so sure the title Friday the 13th, it is a great title, would sell the movie alone. And he took out a front page ad in Variety and over the 4th of July weekend in 1979. Without a script or even a premise. It worked as Phil Skoldry, the financier behind his previous movie Together and The Last House on the Left, Contacted him and offered to cover 25% of the proposed $500,000 budget. Cunningham went into production, hoping to raise the rest of the money along the way until Scully wanted to put out of the entire budget. Cunningham turned him down as he didn't expect that the movie could earn back its budget and the actual long-term part of the deal could really mess him up so production was halted however nobody else was offering to put up the entire budget like this so he changed his mind the next morning jason is not mentioned by name in, in the movie until one hour and 16 minutes into the film filming lasted 28 days wow that's it That raccoon. Stuffed raccoon. This was Betsy Palmer's first film since The Last Angry Man. See, I haven't seen a lot of her movies, but I don't know. I think Siskel and Ebert were big fans of long. 1959. Victor Miller's working title for the script was Long Night at Camp Blood. Oh yeah, that's right for that. <laughs> oh. Excuse me. Oh, is this when Bacon dies? Oh yeah, that guy's already dead. <laughs> mm. 
Cunningham always felt the MPAA held him to a higher standard after this film. <laughs> Gee, sorry. Due both to its success and his belief that other producers would point to it as an example that they should be allowed to get away with this stuff too. Probably. Sorry, I keep calling. Let's see, keep sneezing. This is the Kevin Bacon death scene. I think this is probably like the best looking death scene in the movie. It's unique. I mean, how many times have you seen that? Even to this day, you know? Producer Steve Miner. Initially thought it was an idiotic idea to bring Jason back in the sequel. He wasn't your villain. He's just a figment of someone's imagination. Despite this, he went on to the direct the next two Friday the 13th movies starring Jason as the villain. Yeah. Yeah. It oddly works, though, I think. So about 44 minutes in. About halfway. What's she talking about? Mm. 
Yeah, Kevin Bacon was at Animal House. Come on, you guys. Sally Field was offered the role of Alice Hardy to turn it down. I mean, yeah, she was probably too big, but, you know. I mean, she was in Smokey and the Bandit in 77. That movie made tons of money. Looks pretty good. Great effects. I mean, yeah, it's true. A lot of the kills are pretty brutal. I just think if you compare it today, it's just... Worst run of bad luck since Richard Nixon. <laughs> But yeah, I, I like I like a lot of the other ones more, but I just figure if I'm gonna do these commentaries, I'll just start off probably in order. Just a night of the... She's like hitting on him. Two and a quarter. Wow. It's like, what did he eat? And again, have coffee? It's like... Yeah, so cheap. I like his Jeep. In the French dub version, Jason is called Jackie. His name has been restored to Jason in each of the following sequels, including the intro. <laughs> Jackie, that's, that's funny. 
This film is rumored to have been inspired by the real life Lake Bodum murders in Espo, Finland in, the, in 1960. In this review, Gene Siskel famously called director Sean Cunningham one of the most despicable creatures that the that this industry that has ever infested the film industry. Wow, so that's a bit much, Gene. I wonder if they ever regretted that going so hard against it. Probably not. I don't know. He did give, uh, I think, the 2009 remake one and a half stars or something. So, Beaver. I think that remake's okay, though. I think it's okay. It's not great, but it's just so weird they never made. I think they made money. They just never made a. And then they were in a lawsuit for like 10 years, and now I think they finally settled it. So, I think it's Sean S. Cunningham suing them. Because, like, they would eventually just call the movies Jason, and then they didn't have to have him as a producer and pay him money. Um, because, you know... Or I guess if they say Jason, they, it's something like that. They say Jason, they have to pay him some money. If they if it's called Friday the Thirteenth, they have to give him more money. But there's no hockey mask in this. But the hockey mask isn't until the third movie, I think. It's not until like the end of the third movie too. Something like that. Look at that candle. That's how a fire starts when you're sleeping. Jason's father is never referenced in the Friday the 13th movie, so over the comics and novelizations... <laughs> there's a novelization in this. He is said to be a man named Elias Voorhees, who is very cruel and abusive to Jason. Unused Jason and Freddy team-up screenplay... 
from the early 1990s features a brief scene with Elias that ends up with Pamela murdering him. Hmm. Yeah, Freddy vs. Jason is a, it's a pretty big letdown. She's about to die, I think. One of the writers wrote Airplane. He wrote the script in two weeks. I wouldn't be surprised if some of this improv, so...
Most of the cast had a theater background and little to no film TV experience. The film's first screening before having a studio attached to it led to a bidding war between United Artists, Warner Bros, and Paramount. I think Paramount got it. I'll uh, be right back. Just, just leave it going. So, uh, I'm gonna get this. I don't know if you can see this. 
but as an eight with the eight movie collection. I had this a while ago, it was pretty cheap, I think. I think it was like I think it was like twenty bucks or something. He's uh, checking the uh, generator. Instant coffee, the worst kind of coffee. Casting the movie, Sean Cunningham, 
Oh, wow. Sean Cunningham said he wasn't looking for great actors. He just wanted anyone who looked good, seemed likable, read the dialogue fairly well, and worked cheap. Is this what, uh... The uh, mother taxer. <laughs> oh, she's still moving a little. Producers of the Friday the 13th also produced the Friday the 13th TV show, even though it had nothing to do with the movie whatsoever. Yeah, I've never seen the TV show. I don't know. Is it even like a slasher kind of thing? I'm afraid to Christie's. <laughs> Come to Bobby.
This is when she's like, okay, she's nuts. My sweet innocent Jason. Camp Crystal Lake was established in nineteen thirty five. The classic mistake in a horror movie. She she knocks her down and she throws the weapon away and then runs. It's like keep the weapon. You keep hitting her. <laughs> How did she get that body up there? I know some people are like, this doesn't make sense. Like, how could she kill? Her? Yeah. Like, how, how did she get that body up there? She is creepy. I won't. I won't, Jason. I won't. She definitely is creepy. I'm gonna go get the gun. <laughs> it's a slap bite. Ooh. Again, she leaves the gun, even though she doesn't have bullets, but. You know, it's a blunt object. Uh, object. Yeah. 
Stampede Wrestling introduced the wrestler Carl Moffat as Jason the Terrible, who wore the hockey mask. It was billed from Camp Crystal Lake in the late 1980s. <laughs> Probably you'll get sued. The two original choices for Alice and Mrs. Voorhees were Sally Field and Estelle Parsons. If Cunningham had landed Fields and Parsons, that would mean that Friday the 13th was starring two Oscar-winning actresses. They also silly considered another Oscar-winning actress, Sally Shelley Winters, for Mrs. Voorhees, but she was too expensive. It's almost, almost done here. And she knocks her down a couple times. It's like, just finish her off. There she is. Ooh. Man, she's crazy.
Ooh. That looks pretty good. <laughs> it's like obviously guys' hands. So <laughs> I do have to say it's hilarious. She just like turned into a, a guy. Decapitation. <laughs> so yeah, then she goes down the lake. I think there is some decent cinematography in this, like like this shot. Well, there's Jason. Just gonna inject you. Yes, my am. Jason. We didn't find any more. So yeah, this is the end of the movie. Um, yeah. I think it's a good movie. I, I think the sequels, well, a lot of the sequels are better. I mean, this is better than Jason Takes Manhattan, Freddy vs. Jason, Jason Goes to Hell. Jason Goes to Hell is just such a weird movie. That is a weird movie. It's like he's like a slug creature, an alien slug creature or something. I don't even know how they came up with that. It's so weird. <laughs> but yeah.
So it leaves it a little like ambiguous. It's like, is Jason in the lake or isn't he? You know. So yeah, that's it. Now the credits. So um, yeah, that's 1980 Jason by uh, Sean Cunningham. So. Um, I guess that's about it. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, I think that's it for now.